What's going on guys? I wanted to do kind of a recap video on one of the greatest throwers of all time. So if you're into lights, hopefully you'll like this video. Um, as into gear as I am, for whatever reason, since I was just a little boy, I've been huge into flashlights. And uh, this one, I feel like, will always go down in the record books as being one of the most iconic throwers of all time. Um, first and foremost, something I want to point out here uh, is that Olight has done an exceptional job with some of their SR95 series lights um, with just even the packaging and a lot of people don't care much for packaging but for me it just is kind of a different level of class that it even comes in a, in a metal box for the most part. Um, this particular light of course that I'm talking about is the SR95 S UT light and uh, even on the front of the box here you probably can't see it from where the camera's at now but it says the Intimidator and then the little logo, a lot of people don't realize that is a UT inside of the logo, uh, the logo which stands for Ultimate Throw. So when you open up the box, I mean, these lights, I've probably had this light for three years now or so. Um, you can just see how neatly packed everything is. Uh, you, of course, you've got the beautiful light itself um, with that awesome LED and that super deep reflector there. Uh, you've got a really cool little Olight lanyard that connects really easily to both of the lanyard rings on the light that do swivel all the way around completely. Uh, and then you've got your wall charger for the light as well as a couple extra uh, O-rings and your manual and things like that. Uh, but just to recap, I just thought it was awesome because it's been a while uh, since I've even brought this light out, honestly. And this light has some of the coolest features uh, on my opinion still some features that are a lot cooler than even the modern day throwers and the amount of lumens have gone up in lights now and certainly there are lights that can probably I say probably because I like this light so much but I'm sure factually can out throw uh, this light now um, but man for a long time this guy this guy was king and in my book will always be again one of the greatest throwers of all time um, Olight has really done an exceptional job just creating uh, the uh, proprietary battery packs that they have. And for those of you who are new to Olight, get this case out of the way real quick. Uh, you've got this really neat feature on the back here. This is actually where you plug in the recharger. Um, and if you hit the button, it'll actually show you uh, what your battery life is still at. So you can tell this guy's pretty charged. And I'll tell you, the, the batteries in this light have been exceptional. Um, I can't say enough just how I have had this light for years and the battery has always retained itself. I mean, I pull it out of the case maybe once every three or four months and it is just always completely juiced every time. So it doesn't really drain fast at all, um, the battery life. Uh, one cool thing about this light too, nowadays you'll notice that a lot of the serious throwers are IPX8 rated lights. Um, back during this time when Olight came out with this light, you'll notice the really deep um, vents. I mean, you can actually see all the way through to the head unit inside of the head itself um, through all these kind of fins for heat dispensation. So this one's not an IPX8. I believe this one was IPX7 rated. So you can have it out in the rain and things like that, but you're not going to want to completely submerge it in water or anything like that at all. Um, but just the knurling on the battery pack is so awesome. I love how both the battery packs and the, the head unit is slightly crenellated as well. Um, you could definitely use this thing as a club to hit somebody with, um, and it would do a lot of damage or an animal or something if you needed to. Um, I even love the, uh, Olight does an exceptional job with their user interface. So like the buttons, even just simple things, I mean even in the dark, it'd be so easy to find the button because it protrudes out from the body so nicely. It's this beautiful blue and it is rubber and it's tacky and it's got a soft click, a soft quiet click and I absolutely love that. Um, on lights like this, really on all lights, I wish they'd implement something like that. Uh, but, you know, the user interface, and it's gonna get probably pretty bright here in a second, but you just tap it on once to turn the setting on, and then, uh, or to turn it on to whatever the last memorized setting was, then you just uh, tap and hold. You, you click it in and hold it, and it will filter through three outputs. There are only three outputs on this light. Um, while the light is on or off, if you double tap it in either position, it will take you to strobe mode instantly. Then if you tap the light again, it will take it to its last memorized mode, whatever that mode was. Um, so what I'm going to do for the rest of the video here is I'm going to include uh, some beam shots. Also, just recently 
we had uh, the eclipse, obviously that was a big deal all throughout the United States, and I have a pair of the you know really cheap eclipse glasses, and I don't know if, if you had an opportunity to put them on or not, but I mean it really does an excellent job blocking out light, even looking directly into the sun. Uh, when I wore them during the eclipse, I only saw part of the sun, obviously. So um, we're going to put the eclipse sunglasses up to the camera. And I'm just going to show you just how easily visible even the, the beam is from the O-Light through the Eclipse glasses. And then just kind of throw in a couple beam shots, not going too far crazy. Um, it is late where I'm at and I do live in a neighborhood, so it's not going to get too far crazy. But just to give you an idea, just to kind of reminisce and bring back an old school super boss, one of my absolute favorite throwers of all time. So uh, here come the beam shots. All right, guys, so you can see the uh, little chandelier over the table here. Um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and slide over one of the little eclipse glasses I have so you can just see just how much it blacks out the chandelier. We'll do that now. And that's all that is is just the film, uh, again, to one of the eclipse glasses, and you can tell that you literally can see nothing through it at all. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the cameraman just go ahead and step back about 15 yards into an entirely separate room. And then he is going to place the filter back over the lens again. And now I'm going to start on its lowest setting, and you'll definitely be able to see it through the filter. And then I'm going to slowly go up as well. This is stage two here. And then stage three. And finally, a strobe. So... You guys can probably, I'm sure you all can see that through the camera. Uh, this light's not a joke, man. This light is freaking amazing. Um, also, what I'm going to do is, on the wall behind, I'm going to go ahead and shoot a beam up. And I just want you to see just how focused the hot spot is on this light. This is it in its lowest setting. And then this is it in its second. Oops. This is it in its second setting. And then finally, it's third. And the intensity becomes insane, and there's not much spill to this light at all. Uh, the candela on this light is a quarter million, so it is it is a really a, a thrower by by any definition. Um, now let's go outside and do some beam shots. Hey guys, so we're outside now. I'm in the neighborhood. We found a spot in the neighborhood where uh, we got a, just a little bit of distance. There's a tree line that you can't see right now with some. Um, electric wiring, uh, overhead wiring, um, and you'll be able to see them as soon as I light it up with the light. Just because of what time it is, out of respect for the neighbors, I'm just going to automatically have it on high just to show you what it can do on high. Um, but without further ado, this is at least 300 yards out. I'm going to go ahead and shine the beam down there and you're going you're gonna to see what it does. So here we go. I'm sure you can see all those now. And they can go way past that. The tree line, and we're talking three, 400 yards easy. So, last thing too, I'm sure everyone likes seeing the lightsaber, right? Who, anyone who's into flashlights likes seeing the lightsaber. This thing's just an awesome, awesome, awesome spotlight. Alright guys, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, last thing too I just wanted to show, was this lanyard on there? I feel like we definitely should do that because how many lights come with lanyards anymore? Let's strap this guy on. Let's see here. And uh, just show you what all it came with. Show you how it looks when it's on. So obviously you know you put the lanyard on. Right over the shoulder. And because it swivels, I mean you can literally, I mean, it's, it's simple to use. I'm just turning the light around. Fully, uh, fully adjustable. It's awesome. It's really cool and it has the Olight insignia on it. And uh, just in case you were wondering, uh, the cameraman, because we're using a cell phone to record this, he actually used my uh, UltraTac K18 that I had on me. As I said, I always have a light on me, um, just to have light on me so that you could see me before I did the beam shots. But um, this video truly was just to pay homage, again, to the mighty Olight SR95SUT. I hope you guys liked it a lot. If you have the light yourself, feel free to leave comments. Um, if there's any other types of beam shots or anything else that you'd like to see me do with this light, please uh, leave comments, subscribe, uh, hit like, however you guys feel. I appreciate y'all watching. 
And uh, to all the Flashaholics out there, I look forward to, uh, to you viewing my next videos.